Today, I'm going to show you how to create motion blur behind a subject in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is going to be super cool for those of you who are capturing sports or any type of action photos. We're going to show you how to blur the background behind a subject to make it look like they're actually moving through space a little bit faster. So you can do this on anyone moving, basically cars, a person running, whatever it is. We're going to show you how to make that background blur but keep the subject intact. All right, guys, we had a great episode. Let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. Here's our image for today. We've got a runner on a real cool background, and I think it'll be even cooler if it's all just like, whoosh, like whizzing behind our subject. So we want to add a decent bit of motion blur. Now, I'm going to show you the big problem when it comes to adding blur like this in Photoshop. So let's just duplicate our background. I'm going to hit Control or Command J to duplicate it. Now we're going to go to filter and I'm going to go to blur and over to motion blur. And here's where we actually add our motion blur. So you can change your angle. You know, in this case, it's going to make sense to do it left and right, but you might have someone like, uh, you know, moving back towards the horizon there. So uh, in this case, we're going to use an angle of zero. There we go. And you can change your distance here. You can make it a less blur or more blur. Now the problem here is that is blurring our background, it's also blurring our subject. So when, like right here, I'm like, oh, that looks really cool. Let's hit okay. Um, it's blurring our subject as well. Now, if I try to just create a layer mask and I try to like, you know, make sure to erase just around my subject to make sure my subject isn't blurred, well, check this out. In the area right around my subject, that's going to, you know, you, you can't really separate the background and the subject. Either both are gonna be blurred or both are not going to be blurred. And that's the real big problem with creating a background blur in Photoshop. So what we're gonna do is, let's go ahead and delete this layer. What we're gonna do is we're going to remove our subject first. So we're gonna use our spot healing brush to completely get rid of our subject. Then we're going to blur just the background. Then we're gonna bring our subject back in. So our subject is going to be uh, running just like they would be, and our background is going to be blurry behind them. All right, let's go ahead and jump in and show you how to do that. So to start off, let's go ahead and duplicate our background layer. Control or Command J to duplicate that. Now I want to go ahead and remove our subject. So I can use my spot healing brush to remove our subject. And this doesn't have to be perfect. The reason is, is this is all going to get a blur anyway. So just grab your spot healing brush tool. You want to make sure you're on content aware and sample all layers. And then I'm basically just going to paint over top of my subject. So paint over her leg and you can see it's not going to do a perfect job replacing your background. There we go. But it's going to do a good enough job, especially once it's got a blur applied to it. You're not going to be able to tell at all that there was a person there. All right. So spot healing brush tool to the rescue. It's just a very quick, easy way we can use to remove our subject and replace our background detail. All right. Almost done. We just got a little bit over the head. There we go. And right over here on the hand, we just want to get rid of that. And these couple of lines, we'll get rid of those too. Okay, so just like that, we've got a clean background. And now we're ready to blur the background. So before doing any type of blur in Photoshop, I highly recommend creating a smart object. This is going to allow you to change that blur at any point in time. So let's jump in and show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and convert this to a smart object. Simply right click on your layer and go to convert to smart object. Perfect. And now we're ready to blur. So smart object, our subject is gone. We're ready to blur. So we're going to go to filter and down to blur and over to motion blur. So again, this is just a really simple blur. This can just go left to the right and it's going to look awesome. Now, if you have a subject that's like going uh, back into space and a left to the right blur won't work, check out, go to filter down to blur gallery and go over to your path blur. And this will actually allow you to blur a subject along a path. So for instance, if a, if a person's like running back into space, there we go, you can create a couple of paths and you're going to see how basically, there we go, those paths are going to converge back to a point. So in this example, we'll, we're just going to use a regular motion blur, but if your subject's going back into space, be sure to use a path blur. Okay. 
So our layer is a smart object. We're going to go to filter, down to blur, and over to motion blur. There we go. And we're, our angle is going to be zero. Looks good. Left to the right. And let's go ahead and give it a blur. And our background does look so cool now. Okay, so now that our background has a nice blur on it, well, all we have to do is use a layer mask and we just have to get our subject back visible again. Let's show you how to do it. So clicking on my layer with the blur applied, we're just gonna lower our opacity a little bit. I'm gonna zoom in and click on my layer mask icon. So on the layer mask, basically I just wanna paint black on this layer where my subject is visible because I'm telling this layer, this is the layer with the blur, I'm telling this layer that I want my subject to be visible through this blur. And I suggest using a soft edge round brush to make your subject back visible. Now in this case, I'm just using my brush tool, which is kind of like a, a quick, easy way to do this. If you guys need a more accurate selection, just grab the pen tool. All right, and we've got great episodes on how to use the pen tool in Photoshop. Just go to flurn.com to the search bar and type in pen tool. We've got some great episodes on using the pen tool. Okay, so this just takes a minute. Basically, we just need to mask in our subject again. All right, there we go. And when everything comes together, we're gonna have a perfectly blurred background and our subject is going to look undisturbed. <laughs> That's a weird term to describe a subject. Uh, she's going to look natural and not look like she's got a motion blur from the background on her. There we go. I like that a little bit better. All right, we're almost done here. All right, we've done her jacket. Let's go ahead and take care of like her hair and the top of our subject. There we go. And we're using a layer mask here. So if, if you don't get this perfect the first go round, it's not a huge deal. You can always paint white on a layer mask to make an area visible and you can paint black on a layer mask to make an area invisible. So you get a lot of flexibility here. You're not gonna be tied in to any decisions that you make now. There we go. All right, and then we just got so the legs to work on here. And lowering the opacity like I've done of the layer just really helps out. That way we can actually see through a little bit so we got a good idea of where our subject is and it's going to allow us to mask our subject back in much easier. All right. I know it seems like a couple more steps than you may be used to, like, oh, I gotta mask my subject in, I gotta cut my subject out and all that stuff. Um, but on the flip side, what you're gonna get is a really, really nice clean image with a subject There we go, without a lot of movement on your subject and the background that has a nice blur to it. There we go, let's make that visible and we'll make these shoelaces visible as well. Alrighty, there we go. Okay, well let's go ahead and try increasing our opacity all the way to 100%, all right? And now we have our subject. So. From now, what I would suggest doing, because that was like, um, I did a relatively quick job masking our subject in. What I would suggest doing now, bring your opacity back up to 100% and then refine your edge just a little bit more. So we'll jump in and do that and then we can show you how to change your blur after the fact. So now I'm just gonna clean up my layer mask just a little bit, making this layer visible and invisible. You can see like there's a couple areas near like the leg that I missed. So we just wanna paint white on the layer mask there just to make sure that we are, you know, bringing in that blurred background in these areas there and making sure that our whole subject is visible as well. And this is such a cool effect because doing like motion tracking and stuff like that in camera is totally possible. Like you can photograph a moving subject on, you know, and, and get this effect in camera. It's just, it's pretty tough to do because you have to be, you know, moving the camera basically at the same rate uh, as your subject is moving and, um, you know, professional sports photographers and, you know, people who've got a lot of experience will be able to do that well. But um, for most people who don't have much experience uh, capturing moving objects like that, it, it can be relatively difficult. All right. Cool. And our selection is not perfect, but it's definitely 
good enough. So let's go ahead and zoom out there. And here we can see our subject is now on a blurred background, which is cool. And keep in mind, because we made this a smart object, remember it's got our smart object icon there. We have a smart filter now. I can just turn this blur off and on. For instance, if I want to turn it off, check that out. I can turn it off and back on. I can also change the amount of blur. Simply double click here on motion blur, okay? And I can change this amount of blur and check it out. My subject is going to stay exactly the same because we've just masked her out. And what I'm blurring here on this layer doesn't include my subject. So it's not, we're not gonna get that, you know, like white streaks and things like that going on in the background. So let's go ahead and find a blur. I think that looks great. Our subject is looking really good. We've got a blur going on here. And again, just to show you the, the same I, the same principle here. Let's just make sure that we, I'm gonna motion blur this layer. I'm gonna motion blur a layer where we didn't cut our subject out and see the difference here. This is, this is with the subject cut out. You, you're only going to see the subject and the background. And if you don't cut your subject out, then you get the subject is blurring with your background and it doesn't look natural at all. So again, just be sure to cut your subject out of the background and you'll get a beautifully motion blurred image. All right, guys, and that's all there is to it. How to create a motion blurred image of an athlete or anyone else who's moving around in an image. If you want to do this yourself, just follow these key steps. To add motion behind your subject, first you need to remove your subject from an image. So go ahead and duplicate your background. Then I recommend using the spot healing brush to paint over your subject. This is going to remove your subject, allowing you to just blur the background. With your subject gone, go ahead and turn your layer into a smart object. Simply right click and go to convert to smart object. Now it's time to add a blur. If you're just going left to the right, I recommend using a simple motion blur. Just go to filter, blur, and then down to motion blur. Now, if your person is moving throughout space, I recommend using a path blur and follow the path of the actual blur. Again, you only want to be blurring the background here, so this should not include your subject. After your blur is applied, it's time to mask in your subject. Go ahead and lower down the opacity of this layer, allowing you to see your subject. Put a layer mask on your layer and then paint black where your subject is. When you're ready, go ahead and increase the opacity and clean up your layer mask. You should have a perfectly blurred image with your subject in front of it. And because we made the blurred layer a smart object, you can change your blur at any point in time. Simply double click on your blur effect and you can change your blur radius. So you can get the perfect blur for your image. And that's it guys, we got a beautifully blurred background and our subject looks great. If you love Photoshop and photography as much as I do, go ahead and click on your screen right about now and we'll send you free episodes teaching you Photoshop and photography every single week. And if you have an idea for an episode or a question about today's episode, simply leave it in a comment box right down below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much guys, I'll flirt you later. Bye everyone. It'll be super cool, especially in the Blah. Blah.